Greetings and welcome to In-Depth MDK Rostar. The National Entrepreneurship Development Company Limited, or NEDCO, continues to open doors to people starting off their business while being high on bright ideas but a bit low on backing capital. NEDCO CEO Calvin Morisi joins us to share the latest updates with the organization. Mr. Maurice, always a pleasure to speak with you. The last time, actually, I'm not say the last time, we recently spoke with Mr. Dream Jeffrey. Yes. yes. And he was saying that he would have benefited through having experiences with NEDCO. How proud do you feel to hear of his story, knowing that this is something or a business that is going possibly beyond the shores of Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, excellent. And uh, it comes directly from in our continued support with Dream and his business. And uh, he was an awardee in no, 2023 awards program. And in uh, selecting persons to go to a Ghana mission, he was one of the persons that I thought would have been most um, favorable in terms of getting through its um, businesses in, in Ghana. And it worked out just that, that way. So I'm very proud of him. And uh, the whole ecosystem continues to support him, uh, not only NETCO, but at the post support, uh, export TT, and um, all the legal support and all that. Um, the good thing about the entrepreneurial development programs in Trinidad is that it is not just one agency, but a number of support agencies. So this is where we bring you, and then another agency will take it forward. And that's the best thing about it. So um, notwithstanding, we continue to give him that advisory, um, all the legal support and all that. Uh, Export TT um, is joining us in doing that. And it's really nice hearing how these different arms dovetail together to take literally ourselves forward. Because I think it's so important. Because sometimes we say, okay, well, my part is done. And then the person is kind of set adrift. Or they can be set adrift. Not so in this case and not so hopefully normally. Yes. Because, you see, the sustainable success of the entrepreneur is very important. And one agency may not have all the uh, ability or capacity to do that because, of course, based on the core responsibility of that institution. And um, so that's why it's amazing. And in terms of the planning of the ecosystem, in terms of the state institutions, to support entrepreneurship, you're seeing it working like clockwork. Ministry of um, Trade, Export, TT, uh, NETCO, and all this sort. But moving away from the ecosystem a little bit towards NEDCO specifically, what is the latest? What are some of the things that you're working on? Exploring horizons. <laughs> so 2024, in terms of our Entrepreneurial Award program, it's going to be, it's themed Exploring Horizons, and it's going to give an entrepreneur yet another opportunity to showcase their uh, services and products. And... Um, in, in, in participating in the competition, advise NETCO in terms of what's special about my product, what's special about my business. Uh, and um, so it's an opportunity for them to really grow and to see um, what type of success is available to them in terms of the, the business world. So this year, it's Exploring Horizons, and we have, I think we just, today, we're closing off in terms of the application process. That went quite well, and um, in the next few weeks, we'll be reviewing the applications. And in terms of those, those application processes, what are some of the things that, yes, there'll be things that you're looking for within NEDCO, but outside, do you see people bringing different things? Because once again, I go to Mr. Jeffrey, and just up himself as an individual deciding, okay, well, this is where I am, but I want to move forward. What are some of those things that are looked for and say, yes, I think I want to submit this person's name because I right. see what they're doing, I get the vision. Innovation is also key. Innovation is very key to see um, how persons will take a, a standard business idea and create their own value proposition in it. And that's the exciting part. And um, so we, we look at that, and I think that's also part of the scoreboard in terms of looking at the various innovations. And 
this year's theme feels very telling. So because when people talk about horizons, they can be looking at themselves, pushing beyond their mindsets. Uh, when they look at horizons, they can be looking at penetrating different markets. What is the rationale from your, from your viewpoint on the theme for this year? If you're going to use Darren as a typical example, when Darren participated in the awards program last year, and now where he is this year, he would never have thought that, listen, this is what I can do. Me going Ghana, me tying down contracts in Ghana, never thought about that. So the, the whole thought and the theme behind exploring horizons is to, in, to tell the entrepreneur just that. You've just begun, and I mean, you can achieve anything. So in terms of uh, typifying it uh, from, from, from Darren's perspective, it's, it, this is his horizon in terms of his trip to Ghana and the successes he made from it. And we want other entrepreneurs to do just that and uh -huh. to see that it's possible. Okay, and with that in mind, how much of that responsibility do you as NEDCO assume in terms of trying to change mindsets? Or is it a matter of this person's coming with this mindset? So I don't need to push them to be more as much to explore those horizons because they're already seeking to do so themselves. Right. So I believe that uh, real entrepreneurs, they come with that mindset. Uh, because without that mindset, because businesses go up, it go down, and uh, the ones with the mindset is the one that hold on. They fall down, they dust themselves out again, and they stand up and they continue. And it's the mindset that does that, that I'm going to win. I'm going to win no matter what. Uh, so, so they come with that mindset, and we support that. We build on that. We provide them with the skill sets. Um, training and development is always important. You, as an entrepreneur, you never stop training and understanding and moving and developing and understanding the environment and developing yourself to fit in the environment. And in terms of fitting in the environment, we're going to be looking at some of the things that are in the environment in terms of awards. But we'll do that when we return from the break. We are speaking with the CEO of NEDCO, Mr. Calvin Maurice. Stay with us. We return after this. back we are speaking with the CEO of NEDCO Mr. Calvin Maurice talking about exploring horizons and this is the event that is taking place on the 3rd of August at the Hyatt Regency I believe correct you're correct it's not just one award no, take me through some of the awards thank you so it's about eight awards eight awards and you have an innovation award an award for technology an award in terms of um, green and environment. Uh, you have, uh, of course, a special award in terms of NETCO Entrepreneur Award. So you also have a female entrepreneur, and of course, to, 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 to go with that, a male entrepreneur award. Um, so uh, essentially, those are the key, key awards, the, the key awards that we will be giving out. And I think the, the, the categories increased this year? Yes. So it increased with the male award and or culture, arts and culture. So that is a new category that we um, included this year. And NETCO is focusing on all the various sectors. And uh, certainly arts and culture is one that we'll be focusing in the future on more. Mm. And that is one of the reasons, that is one of the things I wanted to ask about, because I believe this is the third iteration. And as you're going, you, you tweak and you, and you make a little amendments. But what is it that drove you to say, yes, art and culture, it plays a part in Trinidad and Tobago, but we think that we actually need to spur interest by saying, okay, but this is a category that we are going to be awarding. 
artists do not believe that they're entrepreneurs. They're just artists. The hobby part of it, they enjoy it, and that's it. Uh, but there's a career in it. Um, there's a business in it. And I always refer to uh, a very good friend of mine who is an artist, Sean Peters. And he has shown artists and persons in that sec sector that this can be a business. You know? And so Netco really would want to support that particular sector to um, develop them in terms of de develop that business concept as an artist. Transform Carnival, make sure that uh, entrepreneurs who enter into Carnival as artists um, make some money in terms of um, their involvement in Carnival. Who are some of the people who have passed through, uh, who are the past awardees, and what are some of the things that they're doing now if, if, you, have that, if you have that on the tip? Well, I, I, I don't have that on the tip of my finger, but I can, we can discuss that specially. I will want to discuss that in, a, in another program. But we've had some successful uh, participants, and uh, they're doing quite well, just as Darren is, um, quite well uh, on cue, technology-based um, um, business. Uh, as a matter of fact, he also went to, to Ghana and did quite well. So we have a number of businesses that we can probably have a special discussion on that. And is it hard sometimes to put people into a specific category because this person might be using new proprietary technology, but they may also be doing something that is uh, beneficial to the environment or mitigating a practice that may have been a little more harmful to the environment. So do you find people spanning and saying, okay, well, I wonder if I could submit them in more than one award or category, right? Well, Essentially, that will happen, but then again, in the selection process, the, the area that you you show most strength in, that's where you'll be selected, you know. Um, so what you may find happening is based on, the, and, you, and you do find that, because so some of the categories, like for example, environmentally friendly, and you may have, a, as you say, a technology business, you may span across both, because the uh, judges believe that, you know, they can, they can vie for both categories. But at the end of the day, um, you generally win one in one category. Do you find people pushing to win an award, or are they just pushing to say, okay, well, I want to make sure that my business is all that it can be because they're thinking of uh, just having the business up and running? So I think it's uh, an opportunity to them for them to to show the public at large what they're doing. That's one. And, and they're proud of doing it, you know. Even if they're not successful in winning an award and you mingle with them after, they're just proud of being there and persons getting an opportunity to, to understand. Because even though it's like three categories or three participants that shortlisted, um, we'll go and, and, and will show what they're involved in. So that in itself is a measure of exposure. And even, and what we have found as well, year after year, we invite the winners to come to the, you know, the awards program from previous years. And they would just come and say, Mr. Mish, remember me? I am from 2022 and I won and I went and I did this and they, they talk about it. And um, it's good that micro-entrepreneurs can be proud of what they do. You know, and uh, you hear persons in the audience saying, oh my, I didn't realize uh, they were doing that and they were, I didn't realize that that business existed. So therefore, it's really an experience. And what NETCO does after that, we also highlight them on the newspapers. We do programs with them, you know, um, and have them in the social media. So like Oliver Twist, of course, you know, we said we're going to be talking, so we're putting our hand up, our hat in the ring to speak to some of these awardees. But you raised, well, two things stood out to me. One, the importance of having past winners, people who've been nominated or finalists, if you will, uh, just being able to network. Because I think sometimes when you are in your business and you have your nose to the grindstone, right you think you are the only one Correct. and you don't necessarily have that time and to get a word okay well this is how i did it it might not work for you like this but this is something to be aware of and then also 
to make members of the public aware that these things are happening right here in Trinidad and Tobago. But with that said, how do people be a part of the, the award ceremony? Can people go? Is it that something can people, because they say it at the Hyatt, so they can put on a fancy dandan and reach? What, what is that like? So therefore, there will be, and we'll even communicate that to you so you can speak more about it, uh, but there will be a, a fee to get into the awards program, and um, you can buy a table, you can individually. So uh, we'll provide you with that, so therefore you can help us promote um, the information, and that information will be available by the end of June, so we can start promoting it. And the nice thing is that this is going towards a worthy cause, because you're seeing what is happening, you're seeing the people who are benefiting from the efforts of NEDCO, and uh, just that building capacity. Um, when people are finished, do you find them circling back, one, saying thanks, two, saying, okay, well, this is something that I think can be included into the program. What does that feedback look like? So we are always evolving. Um, the last, this year, the program will be much different from the last two years, even bigger and better. Uh, we'll have to talk again. I know we'll have to talk again because uh, we will certainly release an international artist who is coming to Trinidad to speak at NETCO's award and some of the feature speakers we will be having at the NETCO's award program. So it's something that persons have to mark the date, shouldn't miss, but we need to speak to that on a special occasion. Oh, man leaving us with cliffhangers and all of But looking, what are some of the other things on the calendar in terms of courses, initiative, projects that you're working on in, as, as opposed to just the award ceremony, Expanding Horizons, which is on the 3rd of August. Well, NECO is always busy. Um, coming up in July, we have our um, Grand Disbursement Ceremony. So you know that NETCO is now in the process of uh, distributing over a thousand grants um, to entrepreneurs. Um, they can get a grant of $20,000. Um, each um, and it's going to be happening for the next two years. So we're going to have our first disbursement ceremony in July and that is something to look out for. Uh, we have a number of activities happening in Business Accelerator program. We have community programs going on. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we would have something happening in the community in terms of the um, My DNS Youth Caravan. I'm sure you've heard of it. So um, NETCO is all over. Um, every way we can make intervention to that community, to, the, to that entrepreneurial class, to ensure that they get an opportunity to, do, to showcase their businesses. And with that, we want to thank you so much, Mr. Maurice Calvin. Maurice, CEO of NEDCO, letting us know what is happening with the organization and how you can be a part of it to get more information. On behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Roster. Thank you so much for joining us.